So uh, once again, it's a pleasure to be here, Greg. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, it's a great opportunity to be uh, in this event. So uh, today I will talk about a uh, piece of work that I conducted with some colleagues from uh, Federal University of Amazon. And uh, it's about badging and negotiation in software estimates. So uh, as well as well known uh, in software engineering, stakeholders take the effort I needed to execute a task as a way to uh, a project or to, to uh, uh, pre predict uh, the value that can be delivered to the customer so they can have the outcome that they uh, uh, are expecting. Uh, the estimators, uh, they bring this perspective about the factors that would affect somehow uh, uh, the estimates, uh, looking for improving the accuracy when they are discussing uh, how much effort and how much time they will need to put, uh, they will need to take uh, to develop what they uh, what they need for the next uh, release. Uh, it's important to understand here that this estimation process it happens in social settings, and uh, as everything that I do, it involves something related to behavior and social aspects uh, inside of software engineering process. So uh, why is it social? Because it involves not only people working on that, but also the context where they are, uh, uh, they are immersed in. Uh, but the literature about uh, uh, estimates ex is extensive. So uh, we can find things from uh, the 70s until like papers from last week uh, talking about software estimates. And what we found when lurking into the literature is that there is a broad range of uh, uh, factors affecting estimations. Uh, from impact uh, from early estimation. So at the beginning of the project, they have early estimation uh, estimates coming uh, in. And this is taken into account when they are defining the estimates for the next release or the next print, whatever you, you, you call it, uh, <clears throat> until uh, things related to changes in requirements, uh, change, in, change in scope, uh, the project flexibility, et cetera. And this goes through a lot of a lot of stuff that happens in the project, like when when you're estimating, you're executing, performing this this mets, this estimation process. Uh, and in this point, we have a bunch of social things happening, contextual things happening, which includes, for example, pressure from high management, from clients, from the PO. Uh, it includes the uh, team itself. How is the relationship between the teams, the expertise, seniority, where these people are coming from? So there are multiple kinds of factors affecting the way that people uh, estimate software. Uh, to better understand uh, uh, this phenomenon in a more recent uh, uh, fashion, we conducted some observation studies and a couple of interviews, a few interviews, with people from different countries, uh, different companies, different teams. Uh, we took like three months observing uh, four different teams during their es estimate sessions. And our goal was to understand how software estimates were used to establish com commitments uh, regarding the business value. So we just wanted to understand like what's, what, what's tying these two things the estimates and what is being delivered, what is being what, what the, the team is being committed to do. And ended up that uh, we found out that estimates, negotiation, and padding were key things happening in the process. So it was quite impressive the number of things that we could tie to negotiation and padding during this process. Uh, so what we see is that, what we saw is that the teams that we analyze it and the people that we talk it to after, because we talk it to uh, uh, many more people from three different companies later on, is that all of them follow some kind of agile practices, uh, like planning poker-based estimates, uh, where people come with the estimates from the team. So they discuss the task and each of the members comes up with an estimation and uh, they discuss to, to, to come to a consensus. Okay, and each of the teams has a different kind of resolution strategy when you have like disagreements in terms of uh, uh, estimates. Uh, but at the end of the day, what, what we understood is that the PO and team lead just want to know the arguments 
that they need to have to discuss if with the, the, the next layer, with higher management or the client. So they are seeking to understand how they can build commitment, bringing the arguments that the developers are, bring, are, are, are bringing them. Uh, and interestingly, some people do not even argue. Some people, depending on what are the other people that are uh, uh, estimating and what the PO has to say, they don't even disagree. They just go and say, okay, I can change my, uh, my estimates if this is better. So sometimes what we saw is that there is a, a, a kind of power relationship going on. It's like, okay, we need to deliver this by next week. So if we don't, if we don't change the estimates, we'll not be able to do. Or sometimes there is a very senior person who's like, okay, this is uh, quite hard and I know that it's hard. And some, some other people who are more junior, they will just accept. So without arguing ag against or in favor of something. So uh, the way that estimators defend is quite important because uh, this is what is giving uh, uh, the, the, the ammo for the next layers. And we saw that at the end of the estimation process, we talk it to the POs and like all other layers to understand like what was going on. And we saw that there was a kind of a mismatch and each layer had it, their own goals. Uh, with what was going on in the estimation process. So one thing that we noticed is that they play by the book when we're talking about project management, as we know that risk management is something important in, uh, in order to better manage the, the risk, it's common to bet a little bit. So we have a contingency buffer sometimes, like as you can see here in the examples, when we cannot define the feature very well when there are some hidden aspects that we don't know about. It's a different API that we need to consume, or we don't know which, what kinds of problems we'll have to face in this release. So this is a common, and this is completely understandable. However, what called our attention is that we are doing more than that. For every, every team that it talked to and observed, we could see that we are doing different, different things that result in padding and quite often. Uh, and what we are doing is actually hiding the tails from the next level. So for example, uh, we found a couple of cases where people just said like, okay, we could not finish what we promised in the previous release, in the previous screen. So we will just add some more time here to this task. So we are able to finish something else or we need to adjust whatever, whatever it is in the uh, UI from the previous feature that we delivered. So let's just add something here so we can do that. Oh, we need to set up a new server. So why not adding some time to these, these and these tasks? And also things relate to, related to technical debt, for example, or improving the overall quality maintainability of the process. So it was quite usual to hear like, okay, let's do this because we need to refactor a couple of uh, artifacts. So let's just add some time here, add some effort there. What, 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 what is uh, uh, behind that? It's like everybody is hiding from the next level just because they need to deliver something that is not a direct kind of uh, benefit or business value that can be easily shown to the customer. So what I've learned here is that adding is used in the right way in many, many cases, but it's sometimes used as a social way of hiding things. So people just lie informally to make things fit because they know that there are other things that they can do. And uh, everybody who is listening here, who is watching to, to, to this talk, should we think, okay, we do that, it's common. Yeah, it's common, but it's kind of a bad smell if we think about the process of the software process. Uh, and accuracy is in harm when you think about that because we don't know exactly what we are doing and we don't know exactly how our, our team perform. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to sell everything as business value. And this needs to come from the bottom. 
So we need to expose the reasons as estimators, as uh, developers say like, what are we doing? Are we refactoring? Are we improving maintainability? What are we doing? And in the next level, like PO level, team leader level, we need to describe these reasons that developers gave us as somehow customer value. So in the next release, this will be something better. We will improve our performance. The, the product will have a, 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 a better performance. And for the next, the, the, the last level management, when we're in touch with the client, we need to educate them that there are some things that are not exactly new features, that are not exactly direct benefits to the product as they see, but it's something related to the process that will make it better from that moment on. I hope you liked that. And thank you very much again, Greg and Mike for inviting me.